Hi, I'm Zach. Today I want to talk about the dangers of using an ozone generator. I made a video a while back and in that video I talked about the, the benefits of using an ozone generator, I talked about how they work at a chemical and molecular level, and some cautions that should be taken when using one of these machines. And I'll link that video in a card up above, you can go and check that out. In the comments of that video, however, I got a lot of pushback. A lot of people saying, hey, this machine is really dangerous. Hey, you shouldn't be promoting this. I breathed this in straight and it really hurt my lungs. Well, I thought I covered a few of those points uh, in that video, but I want to go back and emphasize some of those precautions that should be taken a little more strongly. So an ozone generator is a tool. It's a power tool, just like any other power tool, you know, a saw, a firearm, a car, any of those things can be used for great good. But in order to do that great good, they have a lot of power. And if that power is misused, well, they can do a lot of harm. An ozone generator is no different. Part of the issue, however, uh, with an ozone generator is that they're just not super common. Uh, not a lot of people know about them, no, not many people know how they work, and much less how to use them responsibly. And furthermore, the damage that these do, uh, both for good or bad, is not seen. You can really only smell it. That's kind of the, the main way that we, that we gauge whether they're doing their job or not. So you can see the damage that a power saw does, and you can see the good that it does through cutting or through, through tearing. Um, however, with an ozone generator, you can't see that damage. It's not maybe quite as intuitive uh, as it might be with any other power tool. Real quickly, I'll recap how they work at a molecular level. The oxygen that we breathe is O2. About 21% of the air that we breathe is oxygen, O2. And ozone, uh, the chemical, is O3. That third atom in the oxygen molecule is really unstable and doesn't want to be with the other two. And so any chance that it gets, it'll jump off of that O2 and latch on to other materials, uh, specifically organic compounds, mold, mildew, uh, any kind of animal byproduct uh, that, that might cause an odor is an organic compound. And that third oxygen atom will jump onto those organic compounds and uh, oxidize them thereby essentially killing them or destroying those compounds. And that's great if it's something that we want to kill. If it's a smell or, or rather a, an organic compound, again, that's causing a smell. However, if that is in our bodies, such as our lungs, that's not something that we want to harm. So let's talk about a couple guidelines for how to use an ozone generator responsibly. First of all, never breathe it in. It sounds pretty simple, but it's true. Now, I've even seen uh, advertisements for these things, maybe outdated advertisements, but nonetheless, uh, that tout an ozone generator as you know being a, a, a pure air machine or an energized air. It's none of that. If you need oxygen for a medical condition, get that oxygen from your healthcare provider. This doesn't make oxygen, it modifies oxygen so our bodies use it differently. And that's not necessarily a good thing. Uh, use these things only in unoccupied spaces. So an ozone generator is great for say a, a fire or flood restoration where the family has moved out of the house and there's a third party contractor that's come in to take care of that restoration. That's what these are often used for. It can eliminate the smoke smell, uh, it can eliminate the, the mold or mildew smell that was caused by the flood or by uh, the, the fire mitigation. The, you know, the fire department sprays a bunch of water that can cause some mold. And this is great at eliminating those things. That can be a tool in the arsenal uh, of, of a company that focuses on those services. However, you gotta know how to use it and how not to use it. That kind of comes to our third point here, sufficiently air out the space. So a lot of these uh, units, this one in particular, I chose because it has a timer feature. So I can set this for up to three hours. It also has a full on feature, but I don't use that so much. It has a, a timer feature where I can set it for up to three hours and I can close up that space, either the, the room or the house and turn it on for that three hours or some portion of that that I think will do the job and let it run. I'm gonna let that run. I'm gonna put some fans in the room to circulate or even in the house to circulate air. Uh, and I'm, when that three hours is up, I'm gonna let it set in there. And I'm not gonna go back in. I'm gonna give it a few hours, maybe overnight. And then I'm gonna go back in just long enough to open the windows, open the doors, put some extra fans in, and then I'm gonna get out. 
What I want to do is get fresh air in there to essentially make those uh, O3, those ozone molecules react and be depleted. And fresh air really helps that. Uh, ozone has a, a very short half-life, that is it's used up really quickly. Like I said, it really wants to react and that's, that's, why it, uh, that's why it's so good at what it does. So fresh air is gonna go a long way in, uh, in rectifying that. And it's, uh, it's something that is, like I said, it converts back to O2 really quickly. It doesn't uh, do great harm to the atmosphere. Running your vehicle is gonna do more harm to the atmosphere than uh, a little ozone generator. So sufficiently air out the space and only go in there long enough to, uh, to open up the windows, turn the machine off if you have to, um, and then get out. Uh, along with that, if you're using it in a space where there's, uh, say it's an apartment in part of a larger building, um, if you're a landlord or a property manager and you're managing that, get in touch with the other tenants. Uh, let them know that this process is going on. Make sure that as much as possible, the, the apartment, the unit that you're using it in, is sectioned off, that there's no way that the air could migrate to uh, one of the other units. There's no you know, common, commonly shared um, uh, central air system. If there is, I'd think twice about using this. I probably wouldn't, um, but, but let people uh, know that you're gonna be using this if they smell something, if they, if they you know, catch a whiff of that, that's what's going on. If they catch it too much, give you a call. Because if really, if they can smell it at all, there's potential for harm. So that brings us uh, to another point. How big of a unit do you need? Well, it's kind of difficult to say. It's, it's so dependent on so many factors. Uh, one of the biggest parts of the, that is the, the extent of the, the issue that you have. So I used this unit one time, uh, the small one, in an apartment where there was a, a little bit of a musty mold mildew kind of smell. And the key to this is to have a shock treatment to really shock the, the room, the environment, uh, to kill the mold and mildew, in this case, for instance. Um, and this machine, for the intensity, uh, just wasn't big enough. So what ended, up, what ended up being, it was in a basement, and there was a thick layer of padding, and then a real thick nap carpet. And that, you know, three quarters of an inch or, or inch of a soft material, over the years, had just absorbed moisture, uh, up through the concrete and just had been damp. There was just this large, really large area uh, that was just holding mold and mildew in there. Uh, it, it wasn't super intense by smell, but it was definitely there. So in that case, we ended up having to remove uh, the, the carpet and the padding and get it out of there completely and, and just remove the source uh, entirely. And that's gonna be the best bet. If you can remove the source entirely, um, do that. Use an ozone generator as kind of a, a last resort, so to speak. Along with that, if you're using it in an area where you, know, you have mold or mildew, you have to remove the moisture. So moisture feeds mold and mildew, and it doesn't matter uh, how, how many ozone generators or how big your ozone generator is, if you've got moisture feeding that mold and mildew, it's gonna come back. So whether that's sealing up the wall of a foundation, or you know, better surface water uh, runoff management, take care of that. There's no replacement for keeping water out of a house. Uh, what other points do we have here? So, as I said, uh, if you're experiencing any uh, respiratory discomfort, if you can smell it at all, get out. You can, you can buy uh, ozone meters. Uh, there's a technical name, I'm not sure what it is. Uh, they're pretty expensive. Um, use some common sense here. If you smell it, uh, then don't go there. Just, like I said, get in, in the room long enough to get it uh, aired out, opened up and aired out, and, and get out. One last thing, I've, I've heard of people using this for clothing. Uh, one guy I talked to said he, he's gotten sprayed by a skunk once or twice, and he'll take his clothes and, and ball them up and put them in a big trash bag with his ozone generator, run it for a couple minutes, tie it up, and just toss it around, let it sit there for a while, uh, and that removes the, the odor, and he can use his clothes again. So if you have a need like that, do it out on the porch, do it outside. Don't do it in, in an occupied space. If you're somebody that has a pre-existing uh, respiratory condition, specifically allergies, asthma, 
I would steer clear of this. Find someone else to do the work. Uh, find find another way around this. Uh, maybe do some research about the, the ozone uh, meters uh, because that's something that it does do temporary damage to a healthy person. You can feel it for a few days. Uh, your lungs will recover. But if it's if you already have a weakened system, that's not something that you want to mess around with. So hopefully that's helpful. Like I said, it's uh, on some level it's, it's common sense, but on another level it's it's a it's a different set of uh, uh, it's a different set of cautions because it's a it's a, a harm that we can't outright see uh, like so many other power tools. If you like this video, uh, give us a, a subscribe and, and tap the bell to be notified about future videos uh, to keep you informed. Uh, I'll put, post up another video about how to replace the plates in these uh, units. There are ceramic plates that actually do the work of converting that O2 to O3. Uh, and those plates do wear out, so I'm going to give you a quick run through of how to replace them uh, when that time comes. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.